Hi, I'm Corden C, and today I am playing Defense Grid, a tower defense game from a few years ago. And it has uh, many levels, and each level has many options, so there's a huge amount of uh, gameplay here. But I'm going to play this, the uh, last of the story missions, which I think is the most like a tower defense. Or most, this, this is the, the level that I think most encapsulates what tower defense is all about, at least me. to me. They're here, underground. If they take my calls, I'm done for. <gasps> Whatever of me isn't dead already. There are untold numbers of them. This won't be the cakewalk it's been so far. Perhaps when it's all over, we can celebrate. Perhaps you can eat a dish of raspberries, my friend, and describe every last morsel to me. I relish that. You've no idea how much. But for now, have at them. You may remember uh, a little while ago I played uh, Artificial Defense, which was a tower defense slash orbital shooter. Well, Defense Grid is a little different. It's very much the classic tower defense game, and there's a little bit of uh, orbital shooting. You have uh, maybe one or two shots per mission. So the basic idea is you have various types of um, towers that do various things uh, against different enemies and you place them on um, well you can see there anywhere there's like that little uh, sort of gray area the smooth gray area you have to leave the sort of roughed up gray area you can put a tower um, and the various sorts of towers uh, various sorts of enemies so there's combinations and the enemies, unlike artificial defense, cannot go through the towers. These up. So therefore, you end up with um, basically you try to create these uh, mazes, essentially, uh, to maximise the uh, the killing zone for for the for the enemies. And basically, yeah, the, the the economy is based on um, uh, your resources, and the more res each tower costs some resources and you earn resources for destroying enemies or also a bit with time. And with this game, one of the things I like about this game is it isn't highly deterministic. It's always the same aliens, uh, the same enemies coming at the same time and uh, you just build the towers to, to, to match. And uh, so you just do it over and over again and get better and better and build more and more elaborate traps for the uh, unsuspecting, unsuspecting enemies. And this game implements all that tower defense stuff just incredibly well. The missions uh, aren't short, most of the missions um, take me on the order of half an hour. There is a, a fast forward once you've got things set up, but normally I'm at least at the beginning, and for a lot of it I'm quite busy, so I don't use the, uh, the fast forward until it's pretty much all over anyway. Another thing, interesting thing to note about this game is the way that the camera is locked uh, to the center of the view, or your mouse pointer is locked to the center of the view, so the whole camera uh, moves. Uh, whenever you want to see something slightly uh, different or, or play something nearby, you have to shift everything. Works quite well um, in this game. Uh, I think most games it wouldn't work well uh, because you end up with the whole scene moving quite rapidly around. Uh, but in this game, in this game it works because it's all about placing, all about placing things. Uh, it can take uh, some time to set everything up, but that's the whole point. And again, I think that's the whole point of the game is you rush to place your towers in time to handle the enemies. And you can see what, the, what enemies are coming, so you can place various towers. And as I said before, they're always the same. So you know, to, um, for instance, there'll be some flying ones later, so you have to uh, prepare in advance and place some flying uh, anti anti aircraft towers. Uh, the graphics are good. 
you can zoom in much closer than this. You can't zoom out any further than this, which I think is... Um, it would be good if you could, especially on the larger maps. You do feel quite close in sometimes. Um, you want to see what's going on across the whole map. You, know, you don't want an enemy kind of gradually sneaking past you just because you're focusing on a different part of the map. So it'd be nice if you could zoom out, but um, it'll uh, you know, still works for me. Another thing I like about this game is uh, its use of stats in that there aren't any numbers, or apart from resources and number of waves and things like that, when you look at the stats of a tower, or you look at the stats of an enemy, uh, none of it is displayed as numbers, it's all as bars, and you just have to sort of uh, work out how the bars, uh, what, what sort of numbers the bars must represent. And I think that works very well, because I generally I find in game development the, the less you use numbers, the better as far as uh, players are concerned. And there's lots of stats, so that you can get quite obsessed in working everything out. You know, which is best in which situations. You can build up these sort of killing zones, which I'll, which I'll show you later. And um, yeah, and you can upgrade towers and their stats will change. So there's lots and lots of options to keep the player uh, active and, uh, and concerned with what's going on. Uh, yeah, and there's, there's many different types of, of this game. This is the, the standard story mission. Uh, the story's okay, it's nothing special, but it's fine, it works fine. And um, yeah, I think uh, yeah, it works well. But there's also various other challenges you can you can do. So you can do missions over and over again slightly differently. Like you can't use this particular tower, or, or the enemies. There are going to be more enemies, and uh, yeah. So it, can, it will keep you entertained for a very long time if you like this sort of game. Um, it took me several hours to get through the basic story. That's essentially the easy mode, and then you can go on to the the harder challenges. And as far as I can tell, there's no random number generation. No random gen number generation in this game. It's all pretty much definitely You're going to do damage based on what's there, but you never really feel that it's incredibly predictable because, as you can see on a map of this size, the number of enemies and the number of number of towers, you quickly end up with a very sort of complex system. Uh, the theme is fine, the story is basically that uh, you've got to protect your core from these aliens. Um, if the aliens get to the core then they turn around and try and head out again. The, if they keep doing that, uh, then you lose. So basically you've got to stop them reaching the core at the, in this map, the top corner of this map, and then getting out again. Which is not going to happen in this game because I'm setting up a really convoluted maze where these, uh, these aliens are going to have to go past many, many, many gun towers, and I doubt any of them will make it. My hope is that this will be the first time I've played this game and not lost any of the cores, so we'll see this how we go. Kyle. There's no need for you to stay here and die. Once they swarm over my facility, I'll trigger my water to strike, and that, as they say, will be that. You remind me so much of Zeke. His courage, his determination. You've proven yourself the best of us already. Whatever comes next, even if I must in the end, self-destruct. But I'm underestimating you, aren't I? You are like Zeke. You'll never stop, will you? Whatever comes next, it's been an honor fighting with you. Yeah, so basically you build a big engine or big to maze trap. Uh, and then just let it roll through your your enemies. Gun towers can be quite effective. <laughs> you get you get these nice little comments as you go um, about how great your cannons are and other things. But personally, I like the cannon ones because I like the cannons. This will be a cannon-heavy mission. Cannons and gun towers. Um, are my two most common common towers because uh, I think they work particularly well. 
there's a there's a sequel to this game as well. There's Defense Grid, Defense Grid 2, and there's also tons of uh, DLC. If this is the sort of thing, game you like, then you will not lack for content uh, in the Defense Grid family. And I particularly like it. It's a it's a it's a very very good game. Very nicely, it it does what it's supposed to do, which is often something I say about games. Um, it does what it's uh, and what, it, what it's supposed to do. There's many different, uh, many many different type, different types of towers. Um, the only issue with this uh, is that it's going to take. It took me 42 minutes to get through this mission because uh, it's quite it's the last one. There's quite a lot of it. So what I've done is I'm fast forwarding through various bits um, just to show you the relevant, the relevant parts. And you can see here I've just made a mistake by building a tower which blocks people's uh, access. If you do that the aliens will actually, uh, at that point, be allowed to walk through uh, the towers. Otherwise, they have to not walk through towers. So you can, and you can give it to towers and sell them if you want. Take aim carefully, and we'll get through this. Okay, so it looks like one of these aliens has uh, got past my defences. I'm not quite ready for it yet. So I'm just going to, uh, now I'm going to show you the use of the orbital laser. Boom, there it, go, there it goes, that's it. Okay, so here you see uh, the sort of center where I'm creating my, my killing zone. So I've got a temporal tower there to slow down the enemies as they come past and then I'm going to keep upgrading over and over again as, as strong as I can these cannons so they can fire very regularly because they're very good at um, getting, getting the, uh, the bigger, badder enemies um, getting through their shields and knocking them out and then after that there'll be lots of the smaller uh, smaller towers um, more sort of uh, specialist towers to, to deal with them, but this is my sort of my central killing ground. Okay, here come the aircraft enemy, just something quite different. So you just have to be aware and ready for it and uh, have your missile silos set up to deal with it. My uh, killing zone is getting quite, uh, quite killingy. Everything's getting upgraded, and uh, the enemies will have to go through that twice. So good luck to them. Superb! 
We've powered the entire defense grid. The buggers can send army after army, but we'll be ready for them this time. We won. And now you, I believe, have family and friends to get back to. I, on the other hand, will have to find some way to look busy until those nasty devils return. And... Thank you for saving my life. Or whatever this is. Perhaps someday I could connect to a local server in your city and meet your family. Apart from warfare, I'm not certain what I can offer you. But then again, I'm quite certain we have a celebratory dish of raspberries to get to, haven't we? I'll enjoy that. And just for the record, I'm not opposed to blueberries either. And that's it. It's uh, it's all over. Now for the sort of end of the story bit. Well done. Celebrate with some raspberries. Flawless job. And there's the uh, various things. I've achieved my goal. I have... Uh, Completed this mission without losing a single core, which unfortunately means you didn't get to see, <laughs> didn't get to see a core getting getting taken. So I think that's I think that's the highest level. Yes, the the highest level. Good. And you can see there the various types of other way you can play the game if you want, which I may well do a bit later. In the uh, in the meantime, bye.